So hey guys, welcome back to another Wednesday Night Devotional. I'm sorry I wasn't able to be here last week. With Thanksgiving last week, it meant that I was doing all of my duties in a total of two days. Which also meant that the devotional didn't really get written last week, and for that I do apologize. But instead, I did get to spend time with my family and help my parents decorate their house for Christmas. But we're back this week, so if you haven't already, go ahead, hit that like button, share this video with your friends, and make sure to check out our webpage too. It's at mhbcwolville.com. You can find out all about the stuff that we're doing this Christmas season, as well as when you check out our Christmas page, you might just see me along with our other two tech guys of David Cloud and Graham Fowler having a fun Christmas photo together. We even got matching shirts for the occasion, so make sure to go check us out. But speaking of Advent and of Christmas, that is a little what we're going to be talking about tonight. You see, it's, it's easy to forget the joy and the treasure that this time of year is. It's easy to focus on the negative aspects of what this season brings. Adam talked about this a little bit in his sermon uh, the Sunday before this past one, and how we tend to take on negative attitudes and forget what the season is really about. We forget that at the center of it all is Christ. That what this season is all about is the hope that came when Jesus or with Jesus when he was born. It's not about any special sales or who gets the best gift this year. And unfortunately, the commercialization of Christmas has taken that main idea out of it and has made it all about that best gift of the year or you have to buy this or check out what's new this Christmas. It's become all about getting your kids or significant other a better and better gift each year. Meanwhile, many of us are struggling to put food on the table this Christmas because of that pressure. Many families are even wondering if they can have a Christmas because of not having a job or losing a loved one or one of many other reasons. And when it comes down to it, what Christmas has become has left a lot of families broken. See, we've forgotten what Christmas is about. We forgot that it was Jesus who was born in a manger to bring hope to a world that was losing hope fast. It was during the season that Mary was chosen to be the mother of Jesus and Joseph the father. Not because they were wealthy, and not because they were well off, but it was because that they weren't these things that they were chosen. Mary and Joseph were not wealthy people in terms of what it meant in the ancient world. Joseph was a carpenter. He made things like wagons and furniture, farm tools, possibly even beams for homes. But he wouldn't have made much money in that trade. They were regular townspeople in a small backwater town in Israel. So much so that uh, many looked down upon that town. Now don't be confused about uh, which one I'm talking about. I'm not talking about uh, <clears throat> Bethlehem here. I'm talking about Nazareth. See, Nazareth is where they lived. It's where Jesus would grow up. This town was so backwards that when Jesus shows up to start his ministry, he's questioned simply because of where he's from. See, in John 1.46, the, it literally says, Can anything good come from Nazareth? But back to the point that I started with Mary and Joseph, you see, they were nothing special. The only thing that Joseph really had going for him was that he was a descendant of King David. And that was pretty much it. Heck, the entire situation of Jesus' birth was almost a disaster in and of itself. Mary and Joseph weren't even married yet. And Mary was pregnant. But do you know what they do? They don't go blaming each other and act like the world is falling apart. They embrace the knowledge that they will be the parents of the Son of God. Joseph stays with Mary and they work together to bring Jesus up the way that was intended for. They follow God's lead with bringing hope and joy back into the world. They see the positive in what could have been a major scandal. And that's the example that we need to follow this season. It may seem wrong, it may seem hard, but that's what we need to focus on. Instead of trying to get that perfect gift, focus on the time that you get to spend with that person you're trying to give. Instead of seeing a Christmas without presents under the tree, Look at it as a Christmas where you are still together with your family. Find joy in each other. Find hope in each other. Remember, this is a time where hope was found after so long without it. That there is a, this is a time where joy reigns supreme, 
not dollars. This is all for celebrating the birth of a child who would save us all. The season, it's all about celebrating Jesus. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for your son and for the gift that you gave this world and the hope that comes with him. Father, we ask that you are with us, that you continue to guide us and remind us to be joyful in this time when it seems like all the joy is being sucked out by the next best thing or the not being good enough. Father, tell us that we are good enough. Show us that we are good enough because we are your child, your children. And thank you, Father, for the love that you give us every day. In your name we pray. Amen. So I want to thank you again for being with me tonight. And over the next few weeks, I'm going to be focusing more on Christmas and this Advent season as we get closer to the day. So I hope you'll join me in the season to bringing uh, joy to everyone. But with that, I do hope that you all have a wonderful weekend. And I will see you next Wednesday.